in Romans chapter 8. Look at verse 19. The earth knows its condition. It's groaning because the anxious longing to be redeemed and released. And God has subjected the earth, as it says in verse 21 of Romans 8, to the curse in order that man might continually have trouble. Yeah, that's what's so amazing. We spend all of our time getting these devices to make life not so toilsome. God wants life to be toilsome, to remind us that we're frail and feeble and that we are failing and that we are fragile and death is inevitable. And it points us to the only hope that Christ is the answer. That's, that's why everything's falling apart. Well, the earth, aware of its curse that came with Adam's fall, is groaning for the day when the sons of God are manifested in the kingdom. For the earth knows that it, too, will be liberated from corruption. That's the promise we have. But in the meantime, we are subjected to this earth. We plant, but we're not sure what we'll reap, especially in my backyard, my garden. Uh, We build cities and houses and dams and monuments, but they're all subject to destruction. Whether lightning or earthquake or flood or fire or erosion or simply by aging, they collapse, they fall apart. That's the fall. We learn to live our lives in jeopardy every hour. Just at the height of professional achievement, some develop tumors in their brain and they've totally lost their future ability to earn an income. At the brink of their athletic fame, some athlete can be injured and become a helpless paralytic. We fight ourselves. We fight one another. We fight the earth. And every day we read, we hear of the distress of nations, the impossibility to agree between uh, in different nations of the world. There is social conflict, economic hardship, health hazards, military threats. I mean, the, the new prime minister of Russia just announced that they're going to practice with their, their atomic bomb-bearing jets. And he says they're going to fly from, from Moscow to Cuba and land in Cuba. And then they're going to fly from Cuba to Vietnam. And they're going to show us, by flexing their atomic bomb muscles, that they're still a military threat. We hear the whine of pain from animals. We see the struggle of trees and crops as they battle against disease and against insects. In fact, our hospitals that dot this land, the doctors, the medicines, the pesticides, the insurance companies, the fire and police departments, and all the funeral homes bear testimony that we live in a cursed earth. And we do. Paradise is lost. That's why creation groans. But God didn't intend it to be this way. And it's going to be this way only for a little while until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of his Christ and we will reign with him forever and ever. And the ravenous nature of wild animals and of many human beings will be changed. And the crops and the trees will no longer be infested. And the the game of politics will be over. And true peace will come. And man redeemed will reign. And as it says in Isaiah, that... There will be the hammering of swords into plowshares and the hammering of spears into pruning hooks as the millennial peace pervades this planet. That's all part of God's wonderful plan. But what happens between Genesis 1 and 2 that led to Genesis 3? Well, that's what we need to examine. If you want to turn back to Genesis 3, we're going to look at just a couple of points before we venture into the history of the fall. But Genesis chapter 3 introduces us to the bad guy. Genesis 3 verse 1 says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. Now we can't blame it on the snakes, although most of us don't like snakes. Uh, I remember the last one we killed in our yard, we measured it. It was 63 inches long. Do you know that's over 5 feet? That's as tall as my wife. I mean, that was a big one. And you know what? You You know those branch loppers? I tried to get its head. Those things are tough. You can't even cut their heads off. Don't blame it, though, on the serpents. Look at verse 17. Because you listened to the voice of your wife. Why did Adam listen to the voice of his wife? Because Satan spoke to her through the serpent. And before the fall, before weeds and poisonous plants and thorns and thistles, before all that was the wicked venom of the serpent. We need to see what event took place that takes us from Genesis 131 and all of chapter 2 of perfection 
to where we are today. Did you know the whole universe? I mean, I'm not exaggerating. In fact, in physics, the law of entropy refers to the constant irreversible degradation of matter and energy in the universe to increasing disorder. All of the laws that produce dust and decay and death clearly contradict the theory of evolution because our world believes the premise that the natural world is inclined to continual self-improvement. But it's evident everywhere in our world we look that that's not true, that everything is going back to dust. I mean, even in your little garden plot, if you leave it alone, the weeds take over. The tomatoes don't. The weeds do. There's just a tendency toward disorder.